Here's a brief but annoying message to let you know that you could have first heard this episode nine months ago if you were a subscriber to our Iron Filing Society Patreon offering. For the price of a pint and a St Clement's each month, you can get up to four episodes a week, nine months before the rest of the world gets them. Early access to regular episodes, lots of other marvellous benefits, and there's absolutely no adverts or brief but annoying messages like this that will get right on your tits. Find out more and subscribe now at tftimemachine.com slash ironfilings. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, this is it! This is Top Flight Time Machine, I am Andy Hotbody Dawson, pow, pow, pow. I am Sam Nifty Delady, so what, with apologies for my, my hydration, uh, you, you might call it a water bottle, yeah. I call it my hydration flask, just was knocked over right. as soon as the show began. Uh, is that what that was? Yeah, it was a hydration flask. I thought it was some kind of novelty banana, looking by no. the colour and the shape of it. Yeah, it's a it's bright yellow. It's a yeah, bright yellow hydration flask. I know it's not hydration it's week, very nice. but I'm trying to do not a bit yet. of hydration year round. I have. I try to have at least a sip of yeah. water a day. I think that's what the government <clears throat> recommend, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I'd go higher than that because you can never really rely on the government. No. To uh, have your best interests, but hydration week will probably be coming around about end of July. I think yeah. usually does. So get your uh, get your hydration ready. If you have a source of water in your area, then find yeah. it. Get along because there. you'll be needing yeah. it, and uh, also signpost other vulnerable people in your community towards yeah. any hydration facilities that exist because. You know, it's an important subject, but also hopefully it can be a fun one that brings people together. Yeah, it doesn't have to be, you know, dry. <laughs> dry, but it's not dry at all, is it? It's quite the opposite. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah keep keep uh, your eyes and ears peeled for more info on that as it happens. We are looking at the... Um, I keep forgetting what this is called, for fuck's sake. Have a good day, Office dear. Carnage. Oh, yeah. Office Carnage Odyssey, we're calling it. But yeah, it's called Have a Good Day, dear. It's on YouTube. Just search Have a Good Day, dear. Um, and um, we're at the point... Um, we're getting a bit of a build-up of, of dangerous uh, procedures that we should be avoiding. Mm. There's a fella who has rested his fag on the top of a filing cabinet while he peruses some files in it. That's not this good. This is the That's sort of shit practice. we're dealing with today on Have a Good Day, dear. Yeah. There's a fella who goes past in a massive kipper tie, which were all the rage back mm. then, and thankfully haven't come back into fashion, I don't think, since. Um, my flares came back in, in 89 and 1990 in a big way, but the kipper tie I saw, was I saw a that. lad at West Ham, a youngster, wearing a pair of what can only be described as bell-bottoms on just this oh, Sunday. Oh, they're back again, are they? Well, I oh, don't know. Shit. I mean, I saw him in... <clears throat> do you, I don't know if you get this in Sunderland now, but like now there's loads of people who hang around the ground filming things, like their news crews, but it's always like Ugh. children <laughs> like doing their YouTube channel. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It was like the Arsenal fans yeah. seem to be the ones who led the way, and now fucking everyone's doing it. Yeah, you can't get on without being oh, interviewed at least God twice, can you? And there was a young lad, and he had a pair Pops, of Pops. proper... He looked like a member of the Bay City Rollers. Uh, but Blimey. I respected him. I mean, I was like, well, he's got his own style, and he's not afraid to flaunt it. But they were pulled so up really high. Like they were flares. He looked about right. to my eyes. He was sixteen. He was probably twenty-five. But you know, what? it's like when you get to our age, right? Mm. Um, and he had these. They were really wide at the bottom, and they were pulled up to his belly button. And he was wearing like a skin-tight right. top that was tucked in, and some sort of hat that had a seventies vibe about it as well. And he was the host wow. of whatever this was, West Ham TV. All oh, right. Yeah, Cockney TV Maybe or whatever it's traveler. called. Yeah. Maybe he t- he looked a bit like one of those hooligans you see from the 70s who had a scarf wrapped around their wrist. Yeah, yeah. So maybe he'd come from the time, travelled in time from the 1975 FA Cup final. Yeah, it was won. very much that sort of vibe. Whenever I see footage of like football hooliganism in the 70s, it always seems quite unintimidating because they all look like that. I mean, yeah. you know, look, I'm not saying it wasn't, I'm sure it would have been quite a, a lot to handle. But when you see mm. them running around in those kind of weird get-ups, in sort of those funny yeah. Baker Boy hats and bell-bottoms and fucking Mind you don't trip over your clogs, darling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're all dressed up <laughs> like that, and they're all running down the street threatening to beat you up. <clears throat> I mean, you'd laugh your head off, wouldn't you? Of course you would. I mean, the, 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 
the bell bottoms may be coming back. Maybe he's an outlier. I don't he know. He might be an we'll outlier. Yeah. We'll that, that's see. exactly. The, the, these are the thoughts that went through my head. I began to panic, get anxious about it, mm. and in the end, I just thought, Sam, let it go. Okay. It's none of your business. None of your business. The, yeah. the, I mean, the mullet's back in a big way, isn't it? Now I seen someone with a um, mullet the other day, and yeah. I, I just thought, fine, mate. I mean, I actually thought he looked quite. He was a young <clears> lad. I thought, go for it. Once you go bald, that's it. You judge no, hairstyles back. very differently. Because you think, yeah. right, when you've got hair, you're looking at people with mallets. Oh, what a shit haircut. When you haven't got hair, you sort of think, I'd, well, I'd do anything give. for any haircut. Yeah. Yeah. If someone, if a genie came and said, you can have hair, but it has to be a mullet, I'd go, yeah, all right. Bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> Where do I sign, genie? <laughs> your genie cunt. <laughs> your fat genie cunt. <laughs> <laughs> And don't so, talk to me like that, or you will not get any hair or any wishes whatsoever. No Good. wishes for you. Good. I don't. I don't fucking care because I was walking along having a lovely time, and I was perfectly content with my life at last. And now you've come along, and started tempting me with things, dangling yeah. the offer of a mullet inside me. I tell you what, you can't. I wish I'd never rub, rubbed that fucking lamp in the first place. And, and a- on top of that, the cunt's filming it all for his fucking genie YouTube channel. Fucking YouTube, hello. Remember to subscribe. I am the genie, and this is my channel. I'm going to make some wishes come true today, motherfuckers. Leave <laughs> comments below the line. <laughs> and remember, I've got a side channel as well where I give tips on <laughs> cryptocurrency. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, a fellow with a massive kipper tie, which in itself feels incredibly dangerous. I mm. think the kipper tie could get jammed in all kinds of machinery, could easily catch fire. Um, it, it, it's the most hazardous Mate, thing I think ties I've seen in, in this general, whole, this whole film. Fat or thin. Because it was a few years later, the likes of Elvis Costello had the little <laughs> keyboard, thin, sometimes leather, keyboard design tie. Yeah. 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 Um, and then you've got the in-between ones. Whatever the width, <clears throat> your problem is not the width, it's the length. And that's why schoolboys up and down the land have the right idea of doing their ties super duper short in that sort mm. of in the chode style, because it just really like brings down, it reduces your risk of injury and death by such a huge I hate amount. Ties. Oh, they, I hate them. They're cunts, aren't they? I've always tried I, to avoid. I any do own ties. I tie. do own ties, and I have worn them. But I prefer, you know, a day where you haven't had to wear a tie is always a good day, in in a, in a sense. Is. I mean, yeah. I've got a mate who is mi- more militant than me. I don't know if you're this militant. But, like, you know, look, occasionally I quite like wearing a suit. I've got, I used to have a few suits when I used to have to wear them more regularly. Now I've got a couple of suits. I don't mind if there's reason for me to brush it down, have one day in it. Mm. But I tell you, it's so uncomfortable and you feel, you feel sick. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I feel sort of sick wearing it, like, oh, oh, why do I have to wear this scratchy, type fitting horrible thing? It's, like, really horrible. But I don't, you know, it's nice yeah. to feel smart sometimes. My mate, he will never wear a tie. And recently there was a thing at his kid's school, and he said, oh, it was a fundraiser, and he was talking to some other people about it. And I said, why didn't you go to it? He goes, well, they made the theme black tie. Which, side note, is cunty anyway, because any sort of school or adult event that has some sort of contrived... Clothing rules. Yeah, it's just fucking... (laughs) It's like, grow up, you fucking weirdos, right? But anyway, that's a separate matter. It had made it black tie, and he refused to... He he refuses to wear a tie. He will not attend it. He won't go... Even at a funeral, he'll turn up open-collared. I do now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like that. I don't see anything wrong with it. No, I mean, fair it's enough. I mean, if you're against ties, you're against ties. I mean, ties are fucking... The amount of poor... Cu- the, imagine doing some shredding with a tie on, mate. That's that's what exactly. they want to make a film or about. Or a tie. How yeah, many times a year, <clears throat> and the government will be uh, covering it up, of course, and I'll tell you why. You know why it is, don't you? It's the tie lobby. It's massive. Massive. Big tie. And yeah. they talk about these people in Tufton Street who are funded by the big oil companies or whatever. I tell you, he's even more secretive. We know they're not that secretive, the old Tufton Street lobbyists, because we know where they are. It's well they're known. They're in Tufton Street, exactly. If you want to know where the fucking really deep, dark state and, and, the, and the hidden establishment that secretly pulls the strings of our lives, right? 
Look for the people you've never heard of. Have you ever heard of the Thai lobby? Of course you haven't, right? But mm-hmm. I know about it because I'm Britain's best journalist. Yeah. These cunts, right? No one needs a tie anymore. But every single government minister wears a tie. Even the opposition politicians wear a tie. See the king at the weekend having his little knees up? Wearing a tie. Didn't know, but was they, he? They right. all wear fucking ties, right? And it's because mm. big tie, big tie are constantly lobbying governments here in America, everywhere. If you go to any G7 summit, big tie will be there and they'll always be giving the keynote speak speech. And every when- prime minister going back to Harold Macmillan, when they left office, you'll see each of them ended up working as a non-executive director for Tyrac, right? Yeah, very shortly at, afterwards. On huge six-figure salaries. Yeah. All of yeah. them. Wilson, Callahan, Thatcher, even Liz Truss. I know you don't see Tyrac on the high street anymore, but that's the way they like it. They've gone deep underground. Yeah. Believe me, Tyrac still exists. Yeah. Do you remember when uh, like lockdown ended and there was all this talk of, well, we all have to go back to the office now? Mm. And people saying, yeah, that's because the rich own the offices mm. and own the leases and they, they, they don't want offices to close down because mm. it cuts off their supply of money. Because people have realised they can work from home. It was bollocks. It was nothing to do with offices. It was to do with ties. Yeah. Because you work in an office, you got to wear a tie. Work from home, you don't have to wear a tie. Big it's tie. It's in the Geneva Convention. It's our old it's friend, part of human Sir John Tyrak, who's got yeah. his fucking... The shadowy hand of Sir John Tyrak reaches anywhere it chooses. Yeah. Think on, sheeple. Think yeah. on. Um, so... Uh, yeah, bloke with a big kip of tie. There's a fella called Ken who trips over a protruding phone cable sticking out from under a desk. Slips Ken, and you tumbles. daft cunt. Look where you're going. Exa- exactly. And Ken goes, Thanks a lot. That's <laughs> um, all right, tit. And the narrator says, It could have been worse. And we mm. see a glass ashtray, which of course were everywhere in offices back then. Uh, it's broken, it's on the floor. You know, Ken could have landed hand first. Mm. Or even cut his wrists open mm. by landing on that glass ashtray. Um, we then see all kinds of hazards, you know, before our eyes. A secretary puts some files in the top drawer of a cabinet and leaves it open. Fuck leaves sake. the cabinet open. Unbelievable. What's that for? The only reason you leave a fucking filing cabinet drawer is if Hong Kong Fooey's around. I never seen He's going to need I to mean- get in in a hurry. I'm a messy cunt. You should see my Vita Modular. Oh, my God. It's a disgrace, right? But even I would not have fucking overseen a office as hazardous and messy as this one. These people, it can't have been common. These scissors that are left out on the side open. Who lives... And and they're proper old, yeah. like, metal, hardcore scissors, the kind that get rusty quite quickly and they're quite hard to open and close. You know the type. Mm. Some cunts left them just like precariously left on a, like a shelf, <laughs> wide open, ready to cut someone's scissors. throat. Yeah, proper 70 scissors. Um, Great name for a group of that, the 70 scissors. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I just don't know to what extent this, this kind of conduct was prevalent in the 70s. A, I mean, I would yeah, say, as a, we talked about on a recent episode, people were drinking a huge amount at work, not just at lunchtime, but were. probably actually at their desk as well. There's no mention of alcohol in this, but of course it's, it's the it's the elephant in the room, isn't it? Because everyone's yeah, pissed all the they time. They must be pissed. It's the only explanation for the fact they all keep falling over, smashing their head through bits of glass, fucking leaving scissors everywhere. They must be fucking slaughtered. Some some cunt fucking puts a box of paperwork resting on the top of a high shelf, peep, peeping over the top. Then he gets a phone call. He's got a knife on his desk, which incidentally has got four telephones on it. What? <laughs> um, the, uh, What's that? The, that's my, my desk knife. What's it for? That's my desk knife. In case about, I need to do any knifing. Mind what about your business. the phones? Management. Well, one of the phones is for stop. work. One's for the bookies. One's for the wife. And one's, one's for, for me, the mistress. Uh, for my mistress, yeah. And I never get modelled. Hey, Although um, I do get modelled. If I've drunk heavily at lunchtime, by which I mean I've had 14 or 15 brandies down at the <laughs> uh, the White Horse, I will sometimes answer the phone. My I will sometimes accidentally answer my wife's phone, th- uh, imagining it to be my mistress' phone. 
And uh, let me tell you, it's two very different greetings. For the wife, it's usually, what now? For the mis- <laughs> for the mistress, it is always without fail. <laughs> no, what, what knickers are you wearing? <laughs> and the wife was very shocked because I'd had 18 brandies at lunch because I'd been out with clients. I picked up the wife's son. I said, what colour knickers are you wearing? And she went, you dirty bastard. You, yeah, <laughs> you're it. seeing that slot again, aren't you? No, 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 it's not like that. I'm literally wondering what colour knickers you're wearing. Cause I, I still, love you so much. I still think of you that way. I honestly do. After all these years, you I still not. work. I spend half the day thinking about your knickers. <laughs> I spent half the day in the box wanking, thinking uh, about you. Honest. I've had 18 brandies. That's, um, that's and why I've I got c- one thing on my mind. Knickers. Your knickers. That's why I can't get it up when I get home, because <laughs> I've been wanking all day thinking about you. Well, I okay, well, stop- well, I'll get home. I'm not going to be able to sexually perform or perform in any other sense. So get the oh, bed ready because I've got to go straight to bed and put the bucket next to it. But in the <laughs> morning, everything being well and right, I will be having it off with you. No, I'm a, and that is a pledge right here and now. Missionary position. Just you wait and see. <laughs> Two anyway. pumps and off to work. Anyway, I'll be over the now. Goodbye. I, yes, I will be driving my car pissed. It's the 70s, don't forget. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Getting back to the Lightning Lads again, which I've been watching oh, on yeah. Bats TV. Bob got done for drink driving in a recent <laughs> episode, and he had like a bottle and a half of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Try to drive one. Thelma. And some vodka as well. They'll be offered to drive because she knew he had something like two glasses of wine. So she'd have been all right. But, yeah. <laughs> I'm not Different that pissed, times. Bob. I'm only a little bit pissed. <laughs> I'm, only, I'm less pissed than you are. I'll drive. <laughs> um, poor Thelma, though. Why didn't we all fancy Thelma when yeah. we were younger? Strange. Um, not that I get triggered. So, yeah, he's got... Uh, there's a fucking knife on his desk. Mr. fucking Johnny Four Phones. And the narrator says, a pen knife becomes a dagger. As a passerby knocks it off into a bin. Um, there's, As you said, there's the open scissors and some drawing pins, you know, just lying around on a desk. What else? Can of petrol? <laughs> Stick of dynamite? Um, always keep your dynamite in a bucket of sand. A bucket of acid. <laughs> What's yeah. that on your desk? It's yeah, it's just me acid. I keep it there in case I need to throw it in anyone's face. You never know. <laughs> a this. bloke opens a door. It's got a window panel in it next to the, a metal box. It's been left on a filing cabinet. Smash, crash. There's another broken window. Second one of the film. <laughs> um, we, have, we have some spooky music. There's some... Various hazards, like a stuffed filing cabinet, some stuff left piled in a corner. Someone's using a swivel chair to stand on to reach up to get something down. I mean, I've tried that before. That's almost impossible. Uh, it's that's, great that's for your core idiotic. strength. I mean, they actually make you do yeah. similar stuff down the gym now. If you can stand, stand on, on a swivel chairs. chair one-legged for five minutes while the trainer yeah. kicks at it or whacks you with a snooker cue, that means you could, you've really got great core strength, which is where it all comes from, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's just it's my full gym. circle, isn't it? That's my yeah. gym. He throws he throws lit cigarettes at me while I'm stood on a swivel chair. <laughs> and take those trainers <laughs> off. Do it in these loafers. You got to get your own loafers, but I'll lend you these ones for now. They're from Lost Put Property. Put these flares on now, yeah. and don't worry of all that kit. Do it in your pants and vest. I want you in your pants and vest and a pair of these loafers stood on a swivel chair. I'm going to throw <laughs> fags at you and then I'm going to beat you with a snooker cue. And you've got to stand on one leg and see how long you can stay there. And I've got a camera set up in the corner so I can film it all. Don't ask why. It's all going to a special site in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Especially for Russian troops, actually. I've done a contract um, with the... Uh, with, I've done a contract with the Kremlin to keep the troops' morale up. We had the yeah. We talked about the lifting rules, didn't we, last week? You know, bend yeah. your knees, keep a straight mm. back, um, lifting training. That sometimes you'll get. Uh, make sure you have a firm grip. A careless lift can be costly and dangerous. And as a fellow who's carrying a typewriter around, and he just drops it. Mm. There's not even any attempt to like 
you know, designed some kind of accident. He just drops this type drop, right, and it smashes into yeah, drop. Clang, oh, that's that drop. Drops into smithereens. That's that drop. Then, just carries on walking to the kitchen <laughs> to make a coffee. Oh, I'll get a new one out of the typewriter cupboard in a minute. Uh, we got possibly my favourite bit on seven minutes and fifty-five seconds, which is the computers, and he's the nineteen seventies computers. Dangerous. So I think there's some computer music. Oh, listen to those noises. Computers. Wow. There's flashing lights. Your there's Dangerous, those, mysterious, those sexy. Cards with holes in that used to be in computers. Did you used to do computer studies at school? Yeah. And you'll have been like three years behind me, so the, the late in technology will have been incredible. We did as well, yeah. yeah. And you have to but, learn how to do programming. Yeah. And there was a Fucking game you hell. could play as well, which was actually quite good, called Tea Shop. Sometimes they'd just let us play that for ages. Tea Shop? Yeah, it was basically oh, like The that. Apprentice. And um, <laughs> it was like The Apprentice. You just had to buy... You ran a tea shop, yeah? And yeah. you had to so buy so stock, right? Yeah. And then you had to set the price. But the amount you right. sold was usually based on price that you were selling for, and weather, right? And the weather was randomised. Ah, yeah. And so some days it would be rainy, and that would affect your sales. And so then the next day you'd look at the forecast, which wasn't always reliable, and you think, you know what, I'm not going to buy as much stock for tomorrow because I don't think we're going to get mm. much trade. And then it, the fucking weather would be wrong. Thanks, Michael Fish, you can't. Don't forget, this was around the top. This was just before the storms that he also failed to predict. So we should have fucking realised what was coming because uh, I was fucking missing out on hundreds of customers. Bright, sunny day. They're all coming by wanting a cup of tea or an ice cream. I'm like, sorry, I was expecting rain, so I didn't want to yeah. risk it. I've only got a fucking one small box of PG tips here and half a pint of semi-skimmed. I can't help you. <laughs> Sammy will be delighted there's a 14-minute video of Tea Shop being played out on YouTube. Ah, oh, I'm watching that later. Week number three. Cost of one tea, three pence. Cash, £3.55. How many teas will you make? Input two. How many public announcements at five pence each will you make? What's a public announcement for? That's adverts, mate. You're paying for fucking ads for your tea shop. You're charged for one tea, 30? What? 30 pence? London Bad prices, news, the mate. power cut. The tea urn won't work. Oh. That's the space bar. Oh, yeah, they chuck shit like that at you all the time. But, yeah, wow. that was what that we did good. in computer studies. It wasn't really much to do with computers. It was more to do with business. But, yeah, I suppose you learned a few lessons. God. See, I told you it would have developed since the three years. I, I, wonder, was, I, was, I was sitting there thinking, this is teaching me the basic of uh, of business. And as much as I like a cup of tea... I will not be going into this. I will wait for de- this technology to evolve until such a time that I can just talk into a computer and then sell it to people. And I will apply <laughs> all the same principles that I have learned here on T-Shop. And now fast forward 40 years and here we are. Jalapeño. Jalapeño. So you see the computer room in this, this office and it's got rows and rows of discs, I guess they are. They're almost like film canisters. Mm-hmm. That at least you put into these massive computers, um, and it tells you to make sure the experts deal with them. Just leave it to the nerds. I think is the message here when it comes to the computers. Uh, and one of them looks a bit like Sir Clive Sinclair. <laughs> the boy over goes. These men are compute. These pedophiles also uh, yeah. are are employed as computer engineers. They are left to do about their mysterious business in a room alone and are never allowed out in the general area where the rest of the staff fraternise. Like prisoners, they stay in their own separate area for their own safety <laughs> and that of yours. If they are allowed on, if they are allowed in the general play area, they may be attacked, scarred, or have boiling sugary water <laughs> thrown on their faces. But remember, I was talking the other day about the, um, the 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 massive vibe you get when you see the back of an old-fashioned TV opened up. Yeah. And there's all that stuff in that you don't know what it does. Yeah. But there's so much of it. We get the same thing here. We get they open up the cabinet um, of of a, one of these supercomputers, and it's just full of cables. So many cables. And Stand no back. One knows what Stand they do. back. These yeah. cables may develop. They may become sentient and attack you like, like so snakes. many snakes. Like the Medusa's head. You. 
Yeah. We get uh, some great mansplaining after that because there's a photocopier that's not working. Uh, the woman's trying to work it and she, the, a fella comes past so she says, the paper is going in there but it's not coming out. I don't know what to do. And he goes, no problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he opens the door and the, so the photocopier. Yeah. yeah, there's some wires so he just tweaks some bits of stuff inside it, tries it again, still doesn't work. Um, we see another fella trying to fix a typewriter with a screwdriver. That's going to be fucked as well. Um, the narrator says, people who think they can fix anything, a little tap, a small adjustment, and the results are usually the same, <laughs> i.e. men stop interfering in things you don't know anything about, which is then borne out because the photocopy guy electrocutes himself and is thrown across the floor. Good. Quite spectacularly. Good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The overriding message basically here is don't be an arsehole. You know, stay in your lane. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the, the woman dashes across to him and she goes, Robin, are you all right? Fucking Robin. No, Robin's dead. Robin's been killed by a photocopier. Um, if the machine you are using breaks down, don't play about with it. Turn it off and take the plug out. Tell other people and report the breakdown to the right person. Either he's go around the office just telling everybody that the machine's broken. Uh, and we see some footage of frayed electrical cables, overloaded sockets. I don't think that's a thing anymore. I think you can overload sockets now. It used to be a bad thing to do back then, didn't it? Have like four or five. Uh, I, yeah, no, I still think plugs. you shouldn't do it. You shouldn't do it, should you? What's the most you've ever done? You can buy done? them in the shops, though. You can buy them in the shops where you can plug six mate, things in at once, so surely mate, it's you fine. you can buy fucking lighter fluid in the shops and like pour it on your fucking barbecue. It doesn't mean it's safe. Yeah. They sell also. Welcome oh. to capitalism, mate. They, they doesn't matter no if they way. sell it in the shop. Doesn't mean it's safe. Fuck. Right? Uh, well, thought- of course they'll go. Oh yeah, here's this new fucking adapter we've got. You can plug in hundred fucking plugs to it if you want. No problem. <sighs> it'll handle the lot. Like fuck it. Well, it'll set fire to your house. Fuck. They don't give a shit. Remember this. Guy, remember David Cameron and his bonfire of red tape. Right? Yeah. We talked about this before. His anti health and safety position to satisfy the mm. fucking morons at the fucking Daily Mail. Right? And he's come in and in his first day, he's going, Right, the first thing we've got to do is start letting British businessmen plug as many fucking plugs into any fucking socket or adapter that they want. Because people well, in the, this country the- are sick of only being able to put one or two plugs into a hole at once. I want to see British um, offices with nine, ten, up to fifteen plugs all in one fucking hole. It was an overloaded socket that started his bonfire, wasn't it? Yeah, with the red tape. Ten things plugged in at once, yeah. 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 No, Um, honestly, listeners, don't. And also, any Lampards don't get in touch to tell me. I don't want to know. All I know is, look, it's common sense, right? Don't fucking... the, the thing that the thing that's really bad that they show in this, but you still see it around and about now. If you go and sometimes I go into people's homes and the first thing I do is I have a look around yeah. at their plug situation. Of course you do, yeah. As soon as I get in there, they go, oh, hi. Yeah, do you want me to take my shoes off? Out of the way. Uh, no, it's okay, it's fine. Right, where are your plugs? Sorry, out of the way, you heard what I said. Right, and then I, I go around. risk assessment. I make a note. And sometimes you see, so they've got, this is what they've got. They've got an extension cable with one of those strips with, like, let's say, four sockets in. Yeah. yeah. You with me? You know Standard. the sort. Then in each of those, in three of the four, they have oh one of God. those brick adapters that also yeah. have three sockets yeah. in them. And one of the bricks has got in it another, another one. strip of four. It's like fucking Lego. They fit. I'm a, Lego. Hey! It's not fucking Lego, you know. This is serious business. It's not this a game. Fun. <laughs> this is not a fucking game. This is electricity. It's the most lethal thing known to man. And you're playing <laughs> with it like it's a fucking child's game. Well, it's not. Unplug all of this shit or I'm going. I'm not staying for dinner. And then you're doing uh, all this shit. Because I'm the only one who's got good banter here. So fucking get these plugs sorted. <laughs> Or fucking resign yourself to a shit boring evening. <laughs> How many situations do you find yourself in when you say the phrase, I'm the only one that's got good banter here? <laughs> say it every day. <laughs> every fucking day. <laughs> say it to my kids all the time. And they're like, <laughs> they don't yeah, buy it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Told, what so I tell my kids every day? I told, 
I was so oh, bored. What? I told my kid that I'd kicked a I'd kicked a fish in the bollocks. We were talking about <laughs> something to do with bollocks. He like he's really anti fishing, right? Big time. Right. right okay. Like, I'm yeah. I'm anti fishing. To be honest, I always have been. I just think fucking hell, respect the fish, man. And uh, but he's like really into. It. I think I put it in his head when he was younger that you know you shouldn't fuck around with fish. And he's like he's taken it and he's run with it. He's a bit like that about the royals as well. He's heard me rant and rave about the monarchy and he's picked up on it but then thought i'm gonna fucking double down right so he mm. causes all sorts of problems at school if they try it like in the build-up to the coronation he was being really militant and in the end even i was going look do you know what just fucking go along with it and he's like no no i'm not doing anything they can't force me right Fuck it out. yeah exactly and so uh he's really anti-fishing and he's i said something like oh he went, you, you shouldn't even catch and then release them because you still freaked them out. You've pulled them out of mm. their natural habitat by surprise. It's traumatising. And then mm. you chuck them back in and you're supposed to be doing them a favour. But they can't, they're traumatised. And I said, yeah. And I said something like, yeah, they haven't got the bollocks for it, right? And he went, <laughs> he went, Dad, fish don't have bollocks. I said, they fucking do. He said, how do you know? I said, because I've kicked a fish in the bollocks before. Believe me, he had them. <laughs> The way the cunt doubled over, believe me, they were fucking bollocks. He wouldn't have he reacted screaming. like that if I'd just kicked him in the stomach. <laughs> he was absolutely, he hated it. I think it's all right if you give them like maybe 20 pence, just put it under their fin before you release them back in again. Because then they've got something to spend when they go Buy back. Buy yourself something nice. Yeah, get yourself some sweets. That's like once I was, uh, I was, I was part, I was about, I, I hadn't been driving long. I was in my early 20s and I was part, I was going for a curry and I was I pulled up on a main road in Hammersmith Park. You know, you can, you can, you find a parking space, but on a main road, like, so you're driving along, mm. like say a high street, a thoroughfare, yeah. Andy. And yeah. you, really what you're doing is you're looking, we have them for, here. You're, you're looking for a left or a right turn, aren't you? To like think, I'll yeah. park down this left or right turn. No problem. But to your surprise, there's a fucking space available on the main strip outside the yeah. place you're going to. And you're like, fucking hell. So you slam on the like brake. Like in the films. Like in the films. Is that like Top Cat, right? You feel you do, You do. feel like Frank Sinatra. So you slam on the brake because you weren't expecting it. Then some cunt's up your ass, isn't he? And you're like, go at your turn around and go, can you back up? I'm going in that fucking space, right? Anyway, that's a side issue. In the end, I get into the space, right? And I'm fucking thrilled. I've only just learned to drive. I'm in my Citroen AX, right? I've told the story about when I bought that off a bloke in Brighton, right? And I'm like buzzing, thinking this is fucking dreamland. Look at me pulling up outside the curry house. And I opened the door without checking the wing mirror. Inexperienced driver. The thing about inexperienced drivers is you think it's all going to affect how they are like when they're driving. But there's loads of other little shit Everything. like that. Yeah. Mm. And I just opened the car into the road, right, without checking the wing mirror. Geezer's coming along on a bike, fucking hurtling along. Hits the car door so fucking hard. Flips over the bike handlebars and over the door. Rolls around in the road, right? and then he's like lying there and i'm like for a second i think right i've killed him great mm. right and uh but i tell you this the car door was fucked and he wasn't that big Jesus. he was a normal sized adult man yeah but it looked like fucking jeff capes had come running into it right but at the time i didn't notice that because my first thought was with him so i run over to him and i go fuck mate you're all right i thought he was gonna go mad at me right and uh, I was, you know, still like a young slip of lads. I'm like, oh, sorry, mister. Are you all right? I only passed my test recently, so I didn't know about checking wing mirrors. And he's gone, no, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. And he's got straight back it. up to his feet, right? <laughs> and I thought, I wasn't expecting this. I thought he was going to give me a smack or go mental. And then he went, no, 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 no. I'm fine. I'm sorry to you. I'm sorry to you. I should have spotted you. And then I got closer and I smelt alcohol on his breath <laughs> strong alcohol and i realized that he thought he thought well i'm pissed so it's got to be my fault right and maybe it was 50 50 <laughs> but you know i thought well obviously it's my fault but he was just he obviously thought i am fucking slaughtered this has got to be my fault so the quicker i just get up and get away the better and anyway so this guy's probably like in his 30s or early 40s or something i'm like 21 
and I didn't know how to react. And I'm going, no, seriously, mate, I'm really sorry. I can't believe it. Because he'd flown for fucking 10 yards, right? And he goes, no, I see. Absolutely no problem. I said, can I, look, let me look at your bike, make sure. He went, there's no damage to the bike, which there wasn't. And so I've gone, um, uh, well, <laughs> I feel like I can't just let you go in nothing. Here you go. And I pulled a tenner out of my pocket. 20 pence. I gave him 10 quid. But I was 21. That's a lot, right? That's like... Yeah. Now, that would be like giving someone just like 50. 40 or 50 quid in the street. I've gone, there you go, have a tenner. <laughs> Buy yourself a drink. And he went, oh, all right. Like that, and stuffed it in his pocket Brilliant. and cycled off. And as soon as he'd gone, I thought... I saw him cycling off, looking not injured at all. I thought, what did I do that for? I needed that tenner. And then I turned around and looked at my car door. It was smashed to fuck. <laughs> And I ended up having to go to a like a scrapyard and get a car door that was a different colour attached to my fucking oh, brilliant. car. Absolutely brilliant. gutting. Yeah. And that cost me cos- a fucking packet as well. The cosmos has just been in play there. We're talking about giving a fish twenty pence and then you give that fella some money. Yeah. And you mentioned Top Cut, and I rem- remember the best bit in the Top Cut opening credits. Is it when is he gives the, the tip to the that geezer? He yeah. gives the fella a coin that's got a bit of string, string. on the end of it. Yeah, and he that, yanks that, it back. That's the that's definitely the best <laughs> bit. It's the best bit. It just edges out when he like cleans his teeth and um, puts his fa- his eye mask on b- at the end of the night yeah. before going to yeah. sleep in his bin. <laughs> but but the, the coin doesn't just spring back. The coin then springs back and lands in his pocket. Lands in his pocket, of course. That's walking. the Top Cat. Yeah, yeah, that's Top Cat. There's never been a slicker oh. cunt in the world than Top Cat. Top Cat deep dive. I Real sleep cool. in a bin. Why? Because I choose to. <laughs> Um, we're almost at the end of this now. Let's be honest. What? What? The, the, what there's this scene about fire. We've got a two-bar fire. We see a smouldering fag in an ashtray, and um, some scary music reappears. And your man says, uh, "It officers fire is the arch enemy. It will destroy everything it touches." <laughs> then he says, "Extinguishers are the only chance we've got <laughs> <laughs> to survive." There's a cunt who's poking a pipe and he drops a smouldering match into a bin that's full of paper. Hmm. Fuck me. Uh, there's a warning about keeping chemicals in the proper container and there's a woman cleaning a typewriter. She's probably a secretary. Yeah. Because she's a woman and has a typewriter. Have and, your uh, secretary she... clean your typewriter. If not, <laughs> it may catch fire. She's been cleaning it with some uh, chemicals and some tissue. Uh, she just drops the tissue into the bin. It looks like it's the bin with Pipe Man's dropped his match into. Whoosh! Instant inferno. Uh, there's some shrieking, um, some spectacular fire footage. The tin of typewriter cleaner gets tipped over, which just makes it all worse. And the, which keeps cutting back to this footage of the typewriter on fire, which is great to see. There's an actor who I recognise who's been. He's played a cop in pretty much everything. I can't remember what he's been in. <laughs> But he takes control. He keeps calm. Um, he pulls... The woman's trying to rescue her bag from the fire and he pulls her back and holds onto her. Oh, yeah, I recognise this bloke. Yeah. I recognise this bloke. He's been in everything, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Um, and he says, get the extinguisher quickly. And another bloke brings it along and uh, he puts the fire out and that's all good. Mm. And then we just have a kind of a montage. He of gets all of the to cuddle the secretary incidents. a little bit as well yeah. in the yeah, name of like comforting, but really we know what knight, he's up to. Isn't he? He's yeah. the fuck who brought it. In fact, talking of that, my brother at the weekend and my mum were telling me about this neighbour that we used to have um, and her name, her nickname, I don't know what her real name was, but her nickname was Mrs. Vomit, right? I can't remember. But, oh, that's because <laughs> she had a... I said, why did you call her Mrs. Vomit? And my mum said, because she had a filthier mouth than even me, right? And she was <laughs> she was like a local maniac. and um, But she was like, she wasn't like an old woman, you know? And um, they were telling me various funny stories about it, which I'll tell on another episode. But she did say, they did say that one night a fire broke. This was all before my dad left, right? A fire broke out in Mrs. Vomit's flat, right? And my dad apparently leapt into action, put a ladder up to her bedroom window, right? Climbed up, <laughs> right? And then and then got her out. But she was just wearing her knickers and a, and a small T-shirt. Or was it the other Ooh. way around? Was it knickers and a T-shirt? Or was it a bra and some trousers? She was half-dressed. And my dad's right. come out the window holding her, right? 
and uh, my brother's like, oh, it was amazing. We were all standing outside watching him. We thought it was such a hero like that. And my mum was like, yeah, but for fuck's sake, it wasn't even a bad fire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? And she went, in a fucking... I wouldn't be surprised if he fucking he started, started it himself. <laughs> she went, literally, she went, the, she the first... Dressed. That she went, he was the laziest cunt you'd ever meet. But the first sign of smoke from Mrs. Vomits, he was like, get the ladder. And he was sat up there like a rat up a fucking drain pipe and dragging her out with only her fucking undies on. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, can't, and that was the 70s as well. So I think fire was being so, used by men a lot to exploit women in those to, days. Uh, yeah, seduce them. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, yeah, there's probably fires every day in officers back then I reckon then we get a montage of all the various uh, hazardous <laughs> incidents that we've seen uh, and then it's back to Don Brennan again and the office SWAT uh, Don is called Ted isn't he in mm. this Ted he says still at it and uh, SWAT says oh just a little bit of homework keeps me off the streets and Ted looks appalled by this um, and one of the women in the office comes over and says where are the order books Ted Ted says in the cupboard uh, watch it, that bloody door sticks. And then he says to the SWAT, that's another one chasing promotion. What, ask, asking where the order books are? Yeah. <laughs> that... Cupboard wanker. Got, got Looking me out about got me in out a out fucking Doing cupboard. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Doing work and that. He says, come on, I'll buy you a quick drink. Um, and the office SWAT says, fabulous. And then looks across to where he put his health and safety poster at the start and he says oh no and of course it's back to what we were talking about last week it's the page three <laughs> cut out with oi, the tits oi, oi. sorry cookies oi, 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 oi. nearly yeah. done fuck's sake that's enough um, and Ted says Ted says now don't you think that's an improvement <laughs> as we're looking at there <laughs> and then the camera needlessly needlessly zooms in on, on the, the page and the picture yeah. and the yeah. tits well, it's, it's, blame blame Ron Tanner for that, who's the writer and director of this film. Who, oh, writer and director. Who, by the way, I think we should deep dive, see what he's been up to <laughs> since. Probably. Probably turns out he made Avengers Endgame. It always turns out Probably. like that, because Ridley Scott used to make things like this in the 60s, yeah. didn't he? Oh, yeah, Ron Tanner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he directed... Um, the Star Wars prequels, no, the, the you know the, the 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 last trilogy. He did a couple of them. What did he? No. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? There's a Ron Tanner on uh, IMDb. IMDb, but this is like right last few years. I don't think it's the same one. This Ron, uh, Ron Tanner, Tanner from the 70s appears to have done nothing else. It might have been a pseudonym like Alan Smithy. Do you oh, know yeah, what I mean? He might have, have been, disowned yeah. it and give it give it another name. Mm. Um, so yeah they go off off to the pub laughing about tits and that and the woman is trying to open the cupboard door that she's asked about uh, the door appears to be stuck as Ted suggested a couple of boxes on top of the cupboard uh oh they've fallen freeze uh, frame on her, on her terrified face we do we do and then we get right at the end I'll try and because the shriek has got special effects going on it And it just says, have a good day, dear. Caption on the screen. And then the um, the closing credits are really good. It's like night traffic going mm, through. Quite moody. London and offices lit up and all that kind of thing. It's got nothing to do with the film itself, but it looks really good. That's Rontana just having a bit of fun himself, I think. Yeah. Creating a calling card that's for himself. The, that's, the little, uh, that's the little, that's the Tanner signature. That's the cherry on the Tanner cake. Yeah, that's you how find. you know you've been watching a Ron Tanner production. You've been tannered. <laughs> <laughs> and you never even knew. Until <laughs> it was it too late. It. Here you go, cunts. And no, I will not be accepting notes. Take it or leave it. <laughs> I'm off to the Seychelles now with your 1,200 quid. <laughs> with 1,200 quid, I insisted on being paid up front. See you, cunts. <laughs> 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 so there we go that is the uh, Office Carnage Odyssey um, should we announce what we're doing next yeah. already or do you want to wait I'll let you announce it because you came up with it 
Uh, I can't remember. I came up with two, uh, with, but I can't remember this one. Is a, this is the wide ranging one. This is okay. the wide ranging one. Okay, so next up we're doing pigs. Yeah, pigs. The pigs odyssey. It's just the pigs odyssey. It's <laughs> anything and everything about the species of animal, the pig. Because if you've got anything you want us to cover that's pig related, I'm very confident get in touch. that there will be a pig farmer. Who listens to this show? I don't know that, but you know, well, there's we've always got our, our farmer. Um, yeah, there's our diversified farmer. He might Lewis. know a bit about pigs, but you know, we want a, if we can find a specialist pig farmer, then we get real well, insight was, to the. He habits. was selling pigs. He was Is selling it? pigs. Oh, well, well, in that remember. case, get, get him in touch so him be because the, the habits, the habits um, of pigs yeah. are really interesting and entertaining uh the history of pigs i'm also guessing is going to be spectacular just everything yeah. about pigs is fascinating but there is a mystery about pigs as well so pigs 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 that's what we're doing next yeah starting next week i reckon about 20 weeks of that yeah, 20 weeks of pigs so. through to the autumn yeah. yeah there you go so thanks for listening and goodbye goodbye <laughs>